You guys, welcome back to the channel. This should be a cool little project. Got my Losi Baja Ray um, V2 here, but this will be the same thing for the 2.0 or pretty much any of the Baja Rays. And you could do this on multiple RCs, but what I'm going to be doing is using a piece of uh, Kydex plastic and I'm going to be making a custom skid plate for the bottom of this truck. And I'm also going to be making what uh, I believe, I don't know the exact terminology, but if you look at uh, like real full scale trophy trucks, they have kind of a, a flap that they have mounted just in front of the rear trailing arms that protects the, the trailing arm, the drive shaft, the rear suspension, just protects it from any kind of debris and uh, dirt and rocks and stuff that are flying up and, and would hit into that. So I kind of think it looks cool, looks very scale, and it's going to be functional as it should help kind of protect everything on the rear of the truck. So my first plan was just try to mount. I'm going to be using like, uh, this is a bicycle inner tube. I'm going to be using this to make the flap that hangs down. And I was just going to make like a little strip to, to attach it to the bottom of the chassis. But then I came up with the idea of, uh, and it's not a new idea. Look, T-Bone Racing, who is now out of business, has been doing this for a while. They would make custom skid plates that cover the entire bottom of uh, a chassis pan on a lot of different vehicles. I have one mounted on the bottom of my Super Rock Ray, and it's really cool. But unfortunately, they're out of business. So this is going to be the next best thing. This is pretty cheap. It's heat moldable, so I'm just going to cut out a rough kind of shape, heat it up, mold it to this little kind of a uh, uh, lower bump out section here on the bottom of the chassis and uh, mark some screw holes and hopefully it works out, but we're going to find out. So I think this will be a pretty easy project. Uh, getting the holes in the right position is going to be the toughest thing, but I decided, yeah, just to cover the entire bottom of the chassis here, it'll help protect it. And because this is kind of a, a slippery plastic, when you bottom out going over rocks and, and stuff, it should kind of help the truck slide over a little bit easier. And of course, look, if you have a brand new truck, it's going to be nice to protect this chassis. Mine's already pretty beat up. I got this thing used. Not that it's a huge uh, deal, but it is nice to keep that nice and fresh. But, but yeah, my main goal is just to have a way to mount the flap. So I'll just sandwich the flap along the back section here, run a couple screws through it and bolt everything on and it should be good to go. And I think it'll look cool just having everything blacked out on there too. So anyway, let's get on with this and I'll show you guys how I do it. So let me just talk a little bit about Kydex here. You can get this in all different uh, sizes, bigger pieces, smaller pieces. Uh, I believe this is like a 10 by 12 or eight by, I don't know, I'll measure it. But anyway, it's big enough for the chassis, but you can get different pieces. You can get different thicknesses. This is the 0.060. Uh, thickness so it's it's fairly thin it's going to be plenty thick for what the application is uh, i typically if i'm making some type of a uh like a roof panel or side panels i'll show you guys in a minute i have all of the body panels on my super rock right are done out of kydex and because that is a bigger vehicle i use the 0 .80, uh, 0.080 which is thicker material so you have a lot of options with this this stuff comes in multiple colors patterns, designs, you can get like skulls and flames, all kinds of crazy stuff. If you look on Amazon, eBay, just do a search for Kydex plastic, you'll see all the stuff that comes up. So it's really cool stuff. It's really easy to work with. It's great for making custom RC parts. I'll show you guys now real quick uh, some of the things I've done with it. And I'm, I'm, I'll am i be doing some additional videos on this uh, just to show you guys what the possibilities are and give you guys some tips on working with this stuff. But this will be a cool starter project. It's pretty straightforward. And uh, yeah, let me show you a couple other things I've done and then we'll get to uh, the Baja right okay, here. So real quick, the uh, hood, uh, the roof panels here on both of my rifts are the 0.080 Kydex. And you can see how well this like matched the shape even there. So I kind of cut out a template put this on here, heated it up, and just kind of pressed down uh, to get the shape that I wanted, but came out really nice. They're really nicely molded in, uh, super strong. I use these little, uh, almost like they're, they're like little wiring uh, ties, and they fit perfectly on the cage, so that worked out great. Um, down here, super rock ray, the side panels, Kydex, the roof panel, Kydex, this front custom panel. I made like a little, uh, almost simulated bed there. This does have, let's see if you could see here, that's the T-Bone Racing, and that's the idea that uh, I'm going for there. Uh, what else do we got? So bomber, Kydex roof, 
Kydex uh, front hood. This I actually just shaped by putting over the existing kind of molded. And you can see it did follow some of the contours nicely. Uh, and again, the thinner stuff molds a little bit easier than the thicker uh, stuff. I even did a rear uh, diff guard skid plate for under on my SCX6. Uh, it's been holding up really well. And uh, yeah, works great. And it was super okay, cheap. First step here, number one, I'm just going to cut a piece. Uh, I'll just measure from from here back. This is the RPM front bumper, but it should kind of really be the exact same thickness there. So it'll be one smooth area. But anyway, I'm just going to measure from here to the back and I will cut this to length. Side to side, because of this little bump up, I'm going to have to leave it a little bit longer, but that's okay. I could come back and trim it. So I think I'm just going to cut the front to back measurement and then I will heat it up, mold it to this and then mark the sides so that it, it comes up perfect rather than trying to measure and figure out how much more length I need for this little up and over section here. I'm just going to do it that way. And then my plan is to use, I got to figure out which screw holes. I'm not going to do all of them. I think it would be like a little too extreme, but I think I'm going to do like one, two, three, and then four, five, maybe one of these. And we'll see, you know, it's, it's the less screws we got to mark up, the better. And I think my plan is to use, of course, the, the ideal way to mark all the screw holes would be if you remove this whole bottom plate, which is doable. You just need to remove all these screws and carefully pull this up and stuff's going to shift around. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but uh, it, that can work. And then you can mark these things really precisely. But I think what I'm going to try is to use masking tape, make a template and then put the masking tape template on top of this and use that to mark the screw holes that I want. So let's see if that works. If not, um, worst case, I waste a piece of this, you know, make a hole in the wrong spot or slightly off and I just have to redo it. Uh, the nice thing is once you heat this up uh, to a shape, if you make a mistake, heat it up again, it goes back flat pretty much and you could start over. But once you drill holes in it, you're kind of screwed. But anyway, I could save this for something else and start fresh. But let's do it that way and see. Worst case, I will take this off and do it the hard way. But let's give this a shot. Okay, so the easiest way to cut this, just use a straight edge of some sort, a ruler, you know, hold it on there, and then just score it. It's, it's essentially like working with drywall. Just score it lightly the first time because you don't want to get squiggliness. Be really careful, light score, and then just go a couple times over it, and you'll see it actually even starts to cut through. You don't have to cut all the way through. Just score it, and then just like drywall, just bend it back, and you bend it a couple times, and it snaps like that. So now we have the right front-to-back measurement here. Uh, I'm going to uh, heat this up with a heat gun. Let's mold it to this and then we'll mark the sides and we'll start getting to the screw holes. Okay, so I just pulled the front wheels off just so I can kind of maneuver this without hitting into it and making them crooked. So I'm gonna line this thing up. Let me heat this thing up. I mentioned heat gun. I'm just gonna heat up the center portion. And then uh, I'll show you what I'm gonna do. Because this gets hot and you wanna press this down with your hand, I'm just gonna put a uh, a little shop towel on here just so I don't burn the crap out of my hands and I'll press down and it cools off pretty quick and as it cools it should just retain that shape. You don't want to get too close or you can scorch this and it's just going to look kind of horrible but you guys will see see how it starts bending. You can kind of do both sides. but it'll start getting floppy. You just want to focus on, see how it really starts getting flexible. That should be enough. You got to work somewhat quick. Looks like it's lined up pretty good. And this doesn't need to be super ultra perfect uh, in terms of matching the contours, but you can see it kind of it kind of molded it enough for uh, for our purposes here. Now it really does come down to how much pressure you can apply to any of the the uh, surfaces you're trying to form conform it to but uh, this should work out nicely. 
and uh, I'm going to mark this. And again, I could redo this. Once I trim this, I can reheat this a little bit more um, and then really try to press down harder on it. But I think this is going to work out perfect. So let me mark this side and I'll cut that. And then I need to mark the front edges, trim those, and we should be in good shape. What I'm doing to mark this uh, cutout section here, I just have a little 90 degree. You could use a, a Sharpie probably too, but I'm just lining this up and I'm just using this to scratch it uh, up onto the plastic and just follow that contour there. Then I'll come along and uh, cut this See out. here, I got some light marks, just enough to uh, be able to follow along and trim it off. And we're getting somewhere. We got the basic shape here uh, and we can come back and kind of clean these edges up a little bit and fine tune it once everything is mounted. This stuff is really easy to shape and smooth out with like a rotary, like a Dremel tool with a sanding drum. You can really come in and do some, some little uh, edging and stuff. And I just need to cut out a little bit here for this little inset in the front chassis here. But I'll probably do that with a Dremel and a sanding drum as it's a little bit of a curve. So I'm going to mount it first and then with everything kind of in place, I can mark that better and have a little bit more accurate of a, uh, of a cut. Now the plan, get some masking tape and uh, I'm going to make a template here. Make sure you get the curvature. And uh, I will mark the, I could see through this pretty easily. I'm going to mark the screw holes that I want to use, and then I will carefully peel this off and uh, put it onto the plastic and transfer those marks. So I'm just going to press this down nice so I got like a nice clean uh, edge to follow for alignment. And honestly, even when I put this onto the plastic, I now have this part of the chassis here that's curved in uh marked out nicely so i can go ahead and uh probably trim that up as well so let me i'm going to trim all the edges on this just using a uh hobby knife here Okay, so this seems to be a really good way to uh, mark these holes. Just take a, a little hex driver, find the screw that you want to use. Right? If you press down, you'll see the little indentation. And then you can literally just jam this right into it, and you're going to get the exact center of the, uh, of the screw. So I want to use those two outer ones. Those two, that one's probably, we'll do one, two, three, four, and you could just circle. If you mark ones that you don't end up wanting to use, just like put an X over them and just maybe put a little, you could write a note on here, which one you want to use. So like one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I think I wanted to do, uh, and we'll see. I don't know if I have to do these. I probably will mark these anyway. As I mentioned, I think I forgot these two outer ones are here. Just make a note. You might even want to take a picture, mark the ones. You could even make a mark on the chassis. You would see through the tape, mark the ones you want to use. Um, so that, that, this, this, this one, this one, here, here. Um, and I think that might be good enough. But... Uh, it wouldn't hurt to just go ahead and mark some other screw holes. So if you did have to come back and, and do these, uh, it could help out later. Okay, so now we're going to carefully try to peel this off and hope, hopefully this works, guys. I don't want to have to take this bottom plate off at the moment. If I were doing some other stuff to this truck, it would make sense to pull this off. All right, so we're gonna do that, and then I'm gonna carefully place this on there and drill some holes. Okay, so that seems to be working 
pretty nicely. Just gonna try to get it all smooth out. You gotta be careful when you're pulling the tape off. Don't stretch the tape too much or it's gonna get distorted. So there we have it. We have, I can, I can go ahead and trim these now and uh, I can go and make all my holes. Then what I'll do is I'll put it back on, probably pull these screws out, put it back on and see if everything aligns right. I can make some tiny little tweaks with the holes if I, if I need to. Okay, now we're going to drill some holes. Look, if you guys wanna be super accurate when you're working on RC stuff, just pick up a, a set of metric drill bits. It's so much easier than working with uh, the SAE sizes and trying to figure out what fits. These screws here that go up into these uh, front little plastic plates here are 2.5s and the rest of them are threes, M3s, so three mil and a 2.5 mil just makes life easier. You can find sizing SAE that works, but it's not gonna be, uh, it's not gonna be as easy as this is. Let me get some, some holes drilled here and we'll see how it fits. Another thing I'm doing, I'm just using a sharp awl and just kind of making a little uh, indentation in here, just so when I put the drill bit in, it doesn't walk side to side. I just have a block of wood here on my workbench so I don't drill down into my workbench and I'm gonna start drilling these holes. And just take it easy, go slow. Super easy to drill through. I definitely recommend using the uh, the awl first because you get a much more precise hole. You can feel the the drill bit just sit down in the exact spot you need it to be. All right, those are all the larger holes. Let's get the uh, 2.5s drilled. Okay, I'm going to uh, clean these up. Well, no, they're not too bad. All right, I think uh, that one drills. Yep, I think that's going to do it. Let's uh, let's see how we did. Oh, before I peel this template off, I'm going to trim this out here, seeing as how it's never going to be easier than it is now. I'm going to use uh, Dremel. This is actually like a, a rotary cutting bit for drywall. It's like a roto zip bit, and it works really well for uh, getting into really tight. You can use uh, any number of things on this, but works well for getting into tight little radiuses like that. Try to show you guys here. And yeah, I mean, you can see the stuff cuts pretty easily. So let me do this and I'll clean it up a little bit and then we'll do a test fit. Okay, so I'm just lining this up and looking down. And what's kind of neat, I don't know if you'd be able to even see this if I move the camera. What's neat is the piece, the little piece of the green tape that I pushed in to make uh, the screw holes with, it's sitting down in the screw hole. So I can see that green sticking up uh, or, or shining out at me here. And I could actually see that all of my screw holes are aligned pretty nicely. I think this is gonna work out okay. Uh, I'm gonna double check. I'm gonna take these screws out, put it in, and then I'll come back and uh, make a little recess in this so they sit nice and flush. So now, just so I'm not going crazy, I'm gonna mark the screws here that I'm taking out on my chassis, right? Just so I don't go taking out way too many. That one, we're taking out these two. And that's it. Let me get these out and we'll mount it up. I'll show you guys what I did here. When I took all these screws out, I just stood them up in the pattern that I took them out because some of them, from what I recall, eh, maybe they are all the same size. Maybe I'm going a little nuts. Yeah, okay. Well, it seems like these two front ones uh, up here that go into the aluminum posts are shorter. Seems like all of these rear ones are the same. And then, of course, you have the tiny little uh, two that go into this panel here. So, But this is easier if you just lay them out like this. They'll, they'll go back in 
where they came out of. So always a good so idea. I'm pretty happy with how I think this is going to align perfectly. So what I'm going to do rather than put it on and off and on and off, I'm going to go ahead and countersink some of these so the screws sit uh, nice and flush. Being that it's plastic, they probably would pull themselves in enough if you didn't do this. But two ways you can do this. This is a countersink bit that you can buy from like Home Depot. That works great. You just take it in here and look, don't even use a drill. Just do this by hand. Just go back and forth a few times and take out just enough to, to start to get that screw to sit down in there, right? So this is one option. Another option is find a bit large enough so it kind of matches the triangular shape of the tapered head screw. And then just take this in the same thing. Don't use a drill, you'll drill right through this crap. Just put it on there and, and do one of these deals by hand. Especially if you have a sharp enough bit, you'll start to do the exact same thing. So that's the easy way to do this. And I'll probably have to do that with these smaller screw holes. Yeah, because this bit is too big for that. So for these, I'll just have to uh, find a bit like this and just... And let's let's do that and slap this thing on. All right, just get some screws back in here. Not tightening them down, just um, aligning them. I'm not sure these, because they're going into plastic, may, I don't know if I'm going to have to use a slightly longer screw on those, just because they don't... Yeah, we'll see. They don't grip as crazy strong as uh, some of these other ones. So for these small ones, yeah, see, because they're going in a plastic, I feel like some of it was almost a little stripped out to begin with. These I might have to um, just run a longer screw, but the rest of these all seem to be uh, going in pretty nicely. And I'm going to have to come back and I'll just remove some of these and slide my flap under there and um, do it that way. Just poke a hole. You don't need to drill. I'm just going to poke a hole through the rubber and just way. probably going to run it all the way up to here. And uh, this way it's good. Uh, I may come back and countersink these a little bit more, especially these ones in the center, just so they don't get hung up on stuff. But I'm going to kind of shape this thing a little bit. I'm going to heat this up. It's sticking up in the front. I'm going to trim this a little bit so it matches up more uh, evenly. And yeah, come back and kind of work at this a little bit. But I think overall, it's, it's already, I mean, it's already pretty damn good. So uh, first step, I think, let me reheat this up in the front here before I shape this thing. I said the more even pressure you can get on this, the better. And you could do sections. The problem is the heat will transfer. So if you heat up, if you're trying to do it in little spots here and there, it starts to um, transfer the heat to another spot. So you can kind of do like bigger areas. You can heat the front half, shape it, then you can heat the rear half and shape that. So that's what I'm going to be trying to do here. That's what I'm going to be trying to do here. Yeah, that makes sense. Sounded weird in my head. That's sticking up a little. It might be hard to... I may need to pull out these front ones, lift this up, and kind of bend that down because... Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, that's right where the chassis... Eh, let me try this again. The chassis does have a slight curve right at the front here. Let me try and heat that. And I think I'm just going to... Really get this front edge here down. So you don't want it catching stuff. That seemed to work out nice. That's a nice smooth transition there. So that's good. Um, I gotta say, I don't know. I, I, I feel like I don't even I don't even think I need to mess with this anymore. Maybe this spot here is a little high. The other thing you'll notice, it does start to expand when it gets hot, so you really have to give it a minute to cool, and then it'll shrink back down a little bit. Oh, yeah, that's nice. That's nice and flat. Let me do this side. 
That's pretty damn good. I'm happy with that. Um, let me try to countersink these a little bit. Uh, I'll probably try to use an even bigger bit. Get them to sit down to sit down a little more flush. So I went to a very large bit here. This is like a three eighths, but it seems like the shape of the tip here really matches up good with the screw. So for the larger screws, again, you just want to take out just enough to get that screw head to sit down flush. And you could kind of trial and error this thing, but you'll see see how that made a nice little uh, countersink there. I'm going to go around and do all of them like this because I just did this one and it sits nice and flat now. So let me do the rest. For these uh, screws here that go into these little front plastic plates, because these, these are just plastic, they were kind of stripped out already. Someone over tightened them. I just went with a slightly longer screw. This is a, a 10 mil. I think the stock ones are more like probably six or seven. So I'm just putting those in just so that I can tighten them up a little bit more. So we got everything mounted up nice. I'm just going to take a file here and just kind of just chamfer over this edge here. Just a little extra smoothness, so nothing. Oh, Jesus, knocking stuff over. Just so, uh, you know, a little finishing look. The back, this is going to get uh, pretty beat up anyway, but I'm really happy with that, guys. And if, if you're not doing the, the flappy thingy there, clean up here. If you're not doing the, the flap thing back here, you're done. This is, this is good to go. I mean, you got a nice, smooth, easy sliding uh, chassis protector here. I'm going to go ahead and remove these rear screws, slide my flap under here, and uh, poke some holes, put the screws back in, and I'm pretty much done. I got to decide if I want to do like a three-piece flap, which I think I will. I see that a lot on the full-size trucks. And I think it also just kind of helps it. I don't know if it's going to hang down better with three pieces. I don't know. You know what? I'm going to mount it in one piece and then I'll decide. I could always easily just trim this. I see a lot of them in three pieces. I don't know. Let's, this is an experiment. Let's just see what happens. Slight change of plan with my flap on here. Just because I think when I put the screws in, if I don't, if I don't make a hole in this, it's going to try to twist up the rubber on the screw and just get jammed up. So I'm just marking these with a pen. Uh, going to pull it out and I'm going to use my leather punch. If you don't have one of these, get one. It's great for venting tires, but I'm going to use my leather punch with the smallest punch here and uh, see if this works. Yep. There we go. Got a nice little hole. So let me do the rest of these, mount it up, see what we got. Yeah, that's definitely the way to go. Oh, yeah. So here we have it, guys. Nice. A little flappy flapper. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That looks, that looks right. Uh, oh, yeah. Very cool. Yep, I like it. I like it. And the way that kind of drags on the ground at the right height, it should keep everything deflected down. And uh, we're going to go out and give this thing a rip. It rained overnight. We got some muddy conditions. And let's see what happens. Let's see if it keeps the back of this thing cleaner. But I'm really happy with this. Like I said, you could trim this. It seems like the real full scale ones, for whatever reason, run like a three-piece deal. Maybe this one's mounted for, I don't know. It's hard to really get a good visual if you do a search online of what the bottom of a trophy truck looks like. No one really points this stuff out, or at least I haven't found it. If you find something that has more info on how they set these up, let me know. But I think this is scale enough, and uh, it's going to do its job. So we'll get out and give this thing a rip. Stay tuned, guys. If you want to see some more, I think what I might do is try to make a little skid plate. Look at how beat up this gets. Uh, I think I'm going to make a little skid plate out of the Kydex and I'll mount it to these two screw holes and just wrap it around the back and kind of up the front. And that's probably about it. We'll see what else I can come up with this. Um, we'll see what else I can come up with for this truck. This already does have some 3D printed uh, side panels here that block some of the crud from getting in. But man, yeah, I'm really happy with this. I think this thing turned out great. And uh, yeah, let's get out and give this thing a rip. really wet and 
muddy in spots. It's really nice topsoil here that someone stole a bunch of and they kind of spilled a bunch, which is nice. I <laughs> made a really nice area here. This soil here is, is nice, but this thing's gonna get absolutely filthy. I'm real curious to see how this flappy situation is gonna work out. Um, today is the day for it, right? We're gonna be able to tell how much uh, dirt gets up under there. So let's give it a rip. <laughs> guys so let's see man there's a lot of mud on this thing it is it is heavy uh let's see how the bottom flap did here all right i mean drive shaft looks <laughs> drive shaft looks cleaner everything else shocks yeah you know i think i think stuff is getting in this way uh and of course stuff's flying off the tire that way so hey you know what i don't know it kind of worked Hey, look at this though. That's really doing its job. Curious to see once this gets cleaned up, how uh, how scraped up that is. But today is an off day anyway, because there is a lot of mud. I mean, definitely stayed cleaner up in there. Overall success. I like getting it. a lot of uh, heat buildup with all this extra mud. I think I need a larger motor fan. Uh, I'm gonna run it on 2S for now. This thing still rips on 2S, and that may be what I end up settling with for this track. 3S is kind of crazy. It's ballooning the tires like nuts, and that's gonna just destroy the body. So let me rip this on 2S and see what yes, we Yes, honestly, 2S is plenty with this thing. I'm not sure what the gearing is on this. Um, it's probably geared more for 2S. But we still got plenty of speed, and I could actually use full throttle at times like this is full throttle and it's pretty crazy i don't really know that i want to go faster than that you know tires are ballooning there 3s is really like too punchy and uh just heats everything up too much just because uh, I don't know if something is binding up I don't know yeah I'm, I'm barely steering it <laughs> I don't know what's up with it I just need to double check my endpoints here let me check yeah I don't think it's the endpoints I think it's the uh, servo saver that's a little weak That's why I need to get this uh, Eviratru bell crank installed. Should solve a lot of the problems. All right, that's gonna wrap it up, guys. I'm happy with this. I think it came out good. Uh, once I clean this up, maybe I'll throw in a photo of what the skid plate looks like afterward. Uh, I think this helps. It's cool. It's scale. I like it. Uh, overall success. Uh, real happy with the truck. It's working better with the 60 weight. Uh, still an ongoing experiment, so stay tuned. Uh, subscribe. Check out my playlist. I got to make a playlist for this truck. I'll put all the videos in there if you want to see this from kind of start to finish, where it, where it goes from here. And yeah, man, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.